after he lost to Ghiberti, Filippo Brunelleschi moved increasingly towards architecture. Although, as you've seen, he did codify the use of scientific perspective in some of his other pursuits. And here he becomes particularly important because we're going to return to Santa Maria del Fiore. Brunelleschi's knowledge of Roman architecture led him to solve the problem of the dome. And the problem is very simple. Let me remind you, there are not enough trees in Tuscany, much less in Italy, to build a scaffold to fill that crossing and build the dome. The classical way of building a dome like this would be to build a giant mold under it, build a brick structure over the top, and then remove the mold. Because if you don't, the bricks fall in. That's kind of an issue. So we need to do something different. Now at the time, he's going to look at Roman architecture. And he's looking at the Pantheon, the oldest dome in the Western world at the time. Let me remind you that Santa Maria del Fiore, while beautiful at the time, would have had no dome and had been that way for quite some time. So he begins to work on this idea in about 1417, or let me remind you, a little over 120 years, give or take, since the cathedral began construction. And by 1420, he will be awarded the project along with Ghiberte, although Ghiberte quickly retired from the work. The problem that he has, and the problem everyone has with him, is Brunelleschi is a very difficult man to get along with. You see, he goes to the council, the city council in Florence, and basically brings an egg, well, a lot of them, and says, if you can stand this egg on end, you know how I'll build the dome. And everyone tries to balance this egg, and nothing works, and he finally cracks the egg, so at the very bottom of it breaks, and it stands perfectly. And by the way, that shape is what he's referring to, that shape of the egg, the pointy end of the egg, mimicking the shape that the dome will eventually take. They assign Gaberte to the project because they're hoping Gaberte will rein him in. Of course, that ends poorly. So, what is he going to do? First, Brunelleschi is going to use a pointed arch because it would distribute the weight down rather than out and therefore would not require buttressing, which would have been impossible with the shape of the crossing. So, the basic problem is... If I have a dome, uh, a shallow dome like the Pantheon, like this, it wants to push out. And of course, the way you handle that is you build some kind of buttressing structure to hold that wall up. You can't really do that because this has all been built. You can't add new buttresses to it. So instead, he goes to a pointed arch. And with that pointed arch, what happens is the weight passes down into the thick walls beneath it. And it's going to do so at a fairly straight angle, so you don't have to worry too much about buttressing. Consequently, the weight can be taken on by the semi-domes here and eventually carried to the ground through buttresses, piers, and additional wall structures. So that answers the shape of the dome. But remember I said the bricks would fall in. Well, he has an idea for that too. He's going to use a herringbone pattern. Here on the left you see an illustration of what he does. He lays a line of bricks and then there's a locking brick at the end. And then there's another line of bricks and a locking brick at the end. That locking brick prevents the bricks inside this line from falling in. And that becomes an issue, of course, as you advance and the angle of the dome becomes greater. So this herringbone pattern can be seen today if you were to climb the dome of Santa Maria del Fiore. Now, to minimize weight, he designed a thin double shell around a skeleton of 24 sandstone ribs. And what these ribs do is they actually push in. So we've got our dome. I'm going to draw a very small one over here. And the ribs push in on that dome. Of course, stone, or in this case, brick, is great under compression. So if I push on it, 
it actually makes it more stable. It stops those forces from pushing outward and keeps all of the weight headed down, down the wall. So it works beautifully. The eight most important of these ribs will be visible on the outside. Finally, he anchors the structure with a heavy lantern built after his death, but to his design. Again, it's the issue of the ribs. You're putting everything under compression. The more compression I can put on stone, the better it will act, obviously up to a certain point. So he builds this massive lantern, this structure at the top, and it's basically a giant pile of weight. That's its entire purpose. It's not there to be beautiful. It's there to add mass to the top of the dome. You see, the dome wants to fall inward starting at the center, but if I put a great weight on it right here, then that pushes the dome out and against those forces at the top and thus pushing the weight further down the walls. It's actually a brilliant idea because it can't fall directly in. So you need that weight to put compression on it to put all the forces down the ribs and down that double brick shell. The dome, which uses many Gothic building principles and had to harmonize with the century-old structure, does not reflect Brunelleschi's later Renaissance style when he goes into other architectural elements. So it's a little unusual for him, but that makes perfect sense because, of course, he's adding it to an existing structure. He has to match what's here. So it makes sense that it's not going to match some of his later style. That being said, it's incredibly innovative. He's taken a problem not having scaffolding and used it to create an amazing piece of architecture. And by the way, one other thing that comes out of this is, well, basically a transmission. You see, when they haul things up to the roof, you need to have oxen go one way around a crane. To bring things down, you would have to turn them around and have them walk the other way. Brunelleschi actually develops a quote-unquote geared contraption where he can flip a switch and suddenly the oxen can just keep walking one direction and that flip of a switch changes it from going up to going down. This is a really brilliant man that we just don't have enough time to cover in the depth that he really does deserve.